Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 1st of November. India-Germany inked several agreements to strengthen economic ties. Pakistani PM waives passport requirement for Indians visiting Sikh shrine. An Afghan CEO Abdullah says in favor of prisoner swap if it aids peace. And now for all the details. India rolled out the red carpet for German Chancellor Angela Merkel on Friday as she kicked off her two day visit by attending a welcome ceremony at New Delhi's presidential palace. India and Germany inked 22 agreements aimed at strengthening bilateral ties and bolstering strategic and economic cooperation. German Chancellor Angela Merkel on Friday accorded a ceremonial reception at the Ford Court of the New Delhi's Presidential Palace, hosted by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Merkel arrived on a two-day visit to India late Thursday night, aimed at strengthening bilateral ties and bolstering strategic and economic cooperation. Prime Minister Modi and Chancellor Merkel later chaired the 5th Indo-German Intergovernmental Consultations, a unique broad format dialogue with members of cabinet participating from both sides. Germany and India signed 17 agreements including a partnership on the use of artificial intelligence and agreed to boost economic ties. Five joint declarations of intent were also exchanged between both countries. Prime Minister Modi and Chancellor Merkel also addressed a joint statement. हम जर्मनी को आमंत्रित करते हैं कि रक्षा उत्पाद के क्षेत्र में उत्तर प्रदेश और तमिलनाडु में डिफेंस कॉरिडोर में अवसरों का लाभ उठाएं। फ्रेंड्स, भारत और जर्मनी के विश्वास और मित्रतापूर्ण संबंध, डेमोक्रेसी, रूल ऑफ लॉ जैसे साझा मूल्यों पर आधारित है। The German Chancellor and the Indian Prime Minister later took part in a business forum in New Delhi. Business leaders from India and Germany also attended the event. Germany is India's largest trading partner in Europe and more than 1,700 German companies are operating in India. Two vehicles were set ablaze by terrorists in a village in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir early on Friday morning. The incident came after at least five migrant workers were killed by terrorists in Kulgam on Tuesday. Terrorists set ablaze two vehicles in Kulgam district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir early on Friday. The incident took place in Bonigam village of the district around 1 a.m., the locals said. The incident came after at least five migrant workers from West Bengal province were shot dead by terrorists in Kulgam on Tuesday night, creating an atmosphere of shock and despair. SSP Kulgam, who is investigating that the people who have done all this, the people who have done all this, so, जिसने भी ये कायराना इराना हरकत की है मुझे लग रहा है कि चंद समय में जो भी इन्वालू होगा तो उनको कड़ी से कड़ी सजा मिलेगी जरूर Earlier at least four truckers were killed by terrorists in separate incidents in Jammu and Kashmir since August 5 when the Indian government revoked the special status granted to the region India accuses Pakistan of aiding terrorists and infiltrate them across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir valley Pakistan however denies the allegations In news from Pakistan, Pakistan on Friday announced it will allow Indian pilgrims who do not have passport to visit Gurudwara Kartarpur Sahib Shrine in the country. Prime Minister Imran Khan said his government has also waived off the $20 fee on the day of inauguration of cross-border Kartarpur Corridor and on the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak on November 12th. 
Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday announced that his government has waived off two key requirements for Indian pilgrims visiting Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan, where Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, spent the last years of his life. Imran Khan in a tweet said that Indian pilgrims will no longer be required to bring their passport and only a valid ID will be needed for entering Pakistan for the pilgrimage. Secondly, the visiting Sikhs will no longer need to register 10 days in advance. Khan also said that no fee will be charged on the opening of the cross-border Kartarpur corridor on November 9 and on Guru Nanak's 550th birth anniversary on November 12th. India has been seeking a complete waiver of fee for pilgrims but Khan announced just a two-day relief. In the $20 charge, that has been a sticking point in the talks on operationalizing the Kartarpur corridor. Both countries have agreed that Pakistan would allow visa-free entry of 5,000 pilgrims per day into the country through the corridor which will connect Dera Baba Nanak Shrine in India to Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan. Reports are faced that Taliban proposed a deal trading two kidnap expert professors held by the Taliban in exchange for 80 insurgent prisoners held by the Afghan government. Responding to the report, Afghan chief executive Abdullah Abdullah told a local media outlet that he is in favor of prisoner swap if the move helps Afghan peace process. Afghanistan's chief executive Abdullah Abdullah expressed his opinion in favor of prisoner swap with Taliban if the move helps the Afghan peace process. Reports surfaced the Taliban proposed deal trading two kidnapped expat professors held by the Taliban in exchange for 80 insurgent prisoners held by the Afghan government. One American and Australian professors were abducted in Kabul in 2016 who were employed at the American University of Afghanistan. Meanwhile, the list is said to have been handed to U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad by the Taliban. Though Khalilzad met Afghan President Ashraf Ghani this week, no details on this issue has been out yet. Khalilzad's visit to Afghanistan is part of a recent effort to revive the stalled peace process with the Taliban. U.S. President Donald Trump cancelled the talks in early September after a Taliban suicide attack killed a U.S. soldier and 11 others in Kabul. In news from Nepal, Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has been discharged from a private hospital in capital Kathmandu city where he was admitted on Wednesday morning for a health checkup. Oli was discharged on Thursday evening before which he underwent two kidney dialysis. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has been discharged from the Grand International Hospital in Kathmandu City, where he was admitted on Wednesday morning for a health checkup. Prime Minister Oli was discharged on Thursday evening after he underwent kidney dialysis for the second time in 24 hours. The hospital before discharging Oli issued a release where it mentioned health of the Nepali Premier for now to be normal. The release from the hospital said that health condition of Prime Minister is normal and in due course of his examination and treatment, he was treated with hemodialysis. 67-year-old Oli had undergone a kidney transplant 13 years ago in India. Since then, he has frequently travelled to India, Thailand and Singapore for follow-up treatments. Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sri Sena and Chinese officials observed the official transfer of deeds for 269 hectares of land reclaimed in China-funded Colombo Port City project to Sri Lanka's Urban Development Authority this week. Sri Sena expressed hope that the port city would attract higher volumes of foreign direct investment. A 269 hectares of land reclaimed in the Colombo Port City project was officially handed over to Sri Lanka's Urban Development Authority, or UDA, earlier this week in presence of President Maitripala Sirisena and Chinese officials. 
Speaking at the ceremony, President Sirisena said the project was a valuable long-term investment for the country's economy and that the port city would attract higher volumes of foreign direct investment. Under the Port City project, 91 acres of land is for public use, 62 acres for commercial and 116 acres to be leased by the UDA to China Harbour Engineering Corporation or CHEC Port City Colombo for further development. According to the agreement reached between the Sri Lankan government and the CHEC Port City Colombo, all 269 hectares of reclaimed land will be owned by the Sri Lankan government. In July, the Sri Lankan Parliament approved a motion to include the Colombo Port City within the Colombo district limits. A special police officers' recruitment drive conducted in Punjab district of India's Jammu and Kashmir earlier this week saw the participation of thousands of youth. Thousands of youth took part in a special police officers or SPOs recruitment drive conducted in Punch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir earlier this week. During the first phase of the recruitment drive, physical endurance test was carried out, which is qualifying or elimination in nature. Only the candidates who have passed the fitness test will be allowed to sit for a written test. The locals who participated in the recruitment drive thanked the government for taking up the initiative. especially for the unemployed youngsters isme pure district mein hamara jo hamare paas jo hai almost jo hai 6800 candidates ne abhi tak apply kiya hai jo hai jo ne different jo hai area is area se jo hai isme apply kiya hua hai aaj mandi tehsil ko hum kar cover kar rahe hain fourth jo hai fourth tarikh ko next month jo fourth november ko tamam jo ladies candidates hain girl candidates hain unka ek din mein cover rakhna hai hame yahan pe hum bahut shukr guzar hain यहाँ हमारे जो भर्ती करवा रहे हैं और गवर्नमेंट का और उनसे हम अपील करते हैं कि हम बेरोजगार नौजवान हैं और यहाँ पे हज़ारों की तादाद आप देख लें कि हज़ारों की तादाद में यहाँ बच्चे आए हुए हैं और पूरा अमन माहौल है बहुत अच्छे शाफ शफाफ तरीके से यहाँ भर्ती हो रहे हैं और मैं ये रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ गवर्नमेंट से कि हमारा कुछ ना कुछ किया जाए Earlier this month the recruitment drive for a territorial army battalion in Srinagar received an overwhelming response with 6500 youth from Jammu and Kashmir participating in it recruitment drives like such help the youth in serving the nation building and cementing faith in security forces besides providing employment opportunities scores of devotees took part in a unique festival in india's madhya pradesh province where they lied on the ground as cows ran over them the devotees believe the wishes are fulfilled by taking part in the ritual In a bizarre festival, devotees in the village in India's central Madhya Pradesh province took part in a ritual this week where they lied down on the ground as cows ran over them. The ritual that is performed after the Hindu festival of lights Diwali in Bidavar village near the central temple town of Ujjain is part of the Gai Gauri Puja or cow worship. The cows of the village were decorated and worshiped as devotees danced and took out a procession. After the prayer ceremony some of the devotees lied down and let the cows tremble them by running over them ye apne apne ichcha ke se jaise ki koi apne maan ke hisab se rehte hain mannat rakhte hain log ke ya mera agar ye karya purna ho gaya ya mere ye manokamna purna ho gayi to to isi prakar se sab ke apne apne ek ichcha rehti hai ha manchha rehti hai uske hisab se ye gai ke pairon ke niche zameen pe let jate hain letne ke baad sankdo gai जो संख्या काफ़ी रहती है गायों की ये सारी गायें इनके ऊपर से गुजरती है और किसी प्रकार की आज दिन तक इनको कभी आने कोई जन हाँ द रिचुअल इज कंसिडर टू ब्रिंग द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ काउस विच हिंदूज कंसिडर एज मदर्स बिकॉज ऑफ बींग एन इंटरगल पार्ट ऑफ एन एवरेज विलेजर्स लाइफ विच गिव्स दम एवरी थिंग फ्रॉम डेयरी प्रोडक्ट्स टू फार्म असिस्टेंस एंड मोर Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again India Germany ink several agreements to strengthen economic ties Pakistani PM waives passport requirement for Indians visiting Sikh shrine An Afghan CEO Abdullah says in favor of prisoner swap if it aids peace. 
Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.